Are your brakes feeling inconsistent? Are they feeling a bit spongy? Are they pulling to the bar? Maybe it's time to give your brakes a bleed. We're going to show you how to bleed Shimano brakes step by step. Hydraulic brakes use the power of fluid dynamics. We're not going to go into it too deep, but essentially what happens is that, well, fluids aren't compressible. So a force up here at the lever means that the fluid is pushed all the way through the hose and then it pushes those pads. Unfortunately, if you've got any bit of air, as you might have in a suspension system, you'll know that it's springy and it can be springy in your brake. We're going to bleed it and get rid of all that air. Before we start, brief warning time, uh, mineral fluid, a bit like some other brake fluids, it's not nice stuff. So be really careful with handling it. So wear nitrile gloves, wear some protective eyewear, uh, make sure you keep it off paint and especially off braking surfaces. The other thing to be really mindful of is how you dispose of the old oil. We've got an old container here that we use to pour in the container and then we're going to take it to our local recycling centre. So make sure you adhere to your local rules and regulations about disposing of oil. To do this bleed, you're going to need a variety of different tools. You'll need a 4mm, most likely to adjust your lever. You may need a range of Allen keys, Torx keys, or a flathead screwdriver to remove the pin that holds your pads in. Obviously, the big thing that you'll need is a dedicated bleed kit. So the bleed kits come with a, a little kind of storage container, a bit like a yogurt pot that sits on top of the lever. Comes with a syringe. It's got dedicated fittings, so you'll probably need to get the right one for your system. So do some research. The other thing that it will come with is a, not really a pad spacer, but more a piston spacer. So this, once you've removed the pads, will hold the pistons in the right place. So you're not going to walk those out of the caliper. Other thing that you'll need, I'm surprised it doesn't come with a kit, but it doesn't, is mineral oil. So Shimano make their own. There's a number of different aftermarket brands you can get as well, but make sure that it's designed to work with Shimano. There's a couple of different versions out there that might not work with Shimano as you might think. You'll need a pad spacing tool to push the pistons back in and push the pads in, and you'll need some disc brake cleaner. This process, like many fixes on mountain bikes, is much easier with the bike in the stand. It's not essential, but it will make it a lot easier. So we've put the bike in a stand. First step in bleeding the front brake is to take out the front wheel, and then we're gonna slowly push the pistons back in by using a pad spreader. With the pads pushing the pistons all the way back, it's now time to remove the pads so they don't get contaminated. Just be mindful that there's often a little retaining clip on the opposite side from where the, uh, the nut is on the caliper, and sometimes these can ping off really quickly, so just be really mindful that you keep a hold of it. With the pads out, we're going to install a piston spacer. So this is like a block of plastic which stops the pistons pushing in when we're moving the fluid around. Be really mindful to use the right one. So this one is about the right width, but it isn't going to cover the four pistons. This one is the right one. It's a little bit trickier to put in, but make sure it's a really good tight interface fit. I've not used the retaining pin in the past. That's the same pin that's holding your pads together. Uh, and midway through the bleed, I've had this spacer drop out. It then can lead to lots of things like pistons falling out of the caliper. It's not ideal. So make sure when you put this in, even though it's a really tight fit, that you put the retaining pin in to hold it in place. With the pads out and the caliper set up ready to bleed, it's now time to get messy, get the fluids out, but the brake fluid. So that means we've got to get gloves out and we've got to get protective eyewear on. So as we've discussed, we're trying to get rid of any air that's in the system and we're going to help gravity do its magic. And we're going to position the lever up, uh, sort of making the top of the lever at the highest point. Another advantage of using it in the stand, if you're having to bleed a rear brake, for example, and the hose routing is a little sort of curvy and undulating, make sure that you tip the bike really high at the front so the lever is at the highest point. So any air that's in the system is going to migrate that way naturally through gravity. With Shimano brakes, they recommend that you adjust the lever reach out. And if you've got a free stroke adjuster like this one, that you open that up as well. It all helps with the bleed process. With the lever positioned, kind of on the bar in the right place, and the lever positioned out from the, from the bar as well, it's time to take off this top bleed port. There should be a little rubber bung on it, so sometimes that's missing. There it is, so don't lose that. You can see it just on there. Pop that safely to one side. Now it's time to install the open sort of bucket. Just be careful that you get the threads in correctly and also be careful not to tighten it too tight. If you've got a little plug plunger like this, make sure it's fully inserted and it's time to fill it with fluid. 
In regards to how much fluid to put in, you don't actually need that much because with the Shimano way of bleeding, you push up all the fluid from the base. So this is more the storage collector than it is a siphon or, or loading area for the fluid. Fill the syringe, two thirds full. Next step is we're gonna attach the syringe on the bottom. So first we've got to remove a little rubber guard. Uh, hopefully yours is still there. We'll need to get a seven mil wrench uh, just to open it up once the syringe is on and we'll need to prep the syringe as well. So we'll attach all of that together and then once the syringe is on, we'll open up that valve and then we'll start the bleed process. Once you've opened it up, you can then release the plug at the top on the reservoir. So let's just pop it up. You've got a little clip space where you can clip that little plug in later. Once you've got that all effectively open, then begin pressurizing the syringe. Now it should flow really smoothly through the system. If you've got any kind of resistance, it might mean that you've got kind of some other issues. So just gently tap the hose, that might help accelerate the air moving through the system. And um, just, yeah, be really careful and, and sort of slow. If you try and force the syringe, some of the Shimano brakes have got a relatively delicate sort of diaphragm assembly in here that you can break with too much force. Um, keep checking that the fluid is flowing from the syringe through and up into that reservoir part that you've got on top. Hopefully you'll see some bubbles come through. You might even see a color change. Now, if the fluid is flowing up and it's, it's still kind of coming through quite dark, close off the syringe at the bottom, remove it, fill it up with more fresh mineral oil, reattach the hose, open it up again, and then force it through again. Obviously, be really careful that you're not gonna overflow your reservoir at the top. Another reason why we kept it relatively low when we filled it. But make sure that you're cycling all that new fluid through. Once you're sure that there's no more bubbles, so you've kind of like pushed the syringe a couple of times and it's the fluid flows up really easily, Make sure again that the, that fluid looks as fresh and kind of like bright pink with the Shimano uh, stuff anyway, is, is flowing through. And then it's just time to kind of like lock off the lower bleed port, uh, remove the syringe, reinstall the rubber grommet. Um, if you're being really keen and probably the best practice is then to mist that area with some disc brake cleaner or some isopropyl alcohol to make sure it's clean and devoid of any of that brake fluid because if that contaminates pads, well, it's new pad time. Then up at the lever point, um, you can cycle the lever a couple of times just to feel to the system and see that it's all okay. It's now time to take off the upper reservoir or yogurt pot. Make sure that the plug is plugged in because I've removed the yogurt pot before and then poured mineral oil everywhere, especially where you don't want it. So make sure it's plugged in, carefully remove it, store it to one side uh, for safe disposal later. Return the O-ring and that top plug into the reservoir and screw it in, make sure it's nice and tight. Um, you can then mist that area with isopropyl alcohol. We're now gonna put in your brake pads. Now everything's nice and clean. So carefully put the pads in. Obviously do check if they're worn, because if you've done a brake bleed, you may as well put in fresh pads at the same time. But if the pads are still in good nick, replace them. It's time to put the wheel back in, and then you can set up your lever. So you can adjust the angle of inclination that you need, the, the lever bite point, and then if you've got a free stroke adjuster, you can also change that to your preferred setting. Hopefully this brake bleed has really helped, and hopefully it's demystified what can be a little bit of a scary thing to do, but it's not. As long as you're careful with the mineral oil and you're careful with the disc brake cleaner, it's quite a simple task. Keep it systematic, go step by step, and you too can have a great feeling brake.